So I had a fellow the other day asking me, he said he loves to grow beets, but he'd never grown these, these gold ones. And he's asking me what the taste difference was between the two. So I figured we'd uh, partake. Partake and uh, see if we couldn't provide a little insight. So this is the Merlin beet. And this is the one with the real high sugar content. Yours is a little bit ahead of mine. Mine's not quite that big yet. Cut a little slice here. Don't cut your finger. Are you prone to do that? Yeah, my knife could use a little sharpening. There's a red one. I want you to look there how red that is. That is pretty right there, ain't it? That'd make a fine pickled beet right there. Yep. Let's cut in that other. Now these ain't quite as big yet. I will I ought to just close my eyes where I could do a, a non-biased taste test. It's too late. Blind, we'll have to blindfold you yeah, in we'll the future show. What you think? I like the red one just a tad better. Yeah? Yeah, I do. And I may be just a mind thing with the color that beats supposed to be that color, but I like it a little bit better than I do of this one. It's got a little tang on the end of it that this one don't have. And it may be the maturity of the beet, I'm not sure. I do know one thing. Beets have become one of my good things to grow during the wintertime. Yeah. Look how pretty that is right there. And then these are, I think these are a little sweeter. Yeah. Those might be a little pert. Those are yeah. nice and pretty there. Try a little both. Anyway, let's say hey to everybody. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Row by Row Garden Show. I'm Travis. And I'm Greg. We've got a great show planned for you tonight. We're going to be talking about some corn tonight. Um, we are just going through kind of our show and tell here, talking about these beets. What you about to do? I'm going to cut me another hunk off her. Um, so we got some beets coming along. They uh, kind of stay, mine kind of just in a period of die pause during the uh, winter time. And once the days start getting longer, they really start kicking up and start growing again. Die pause, huh? Die pause. So that, there's certain organisms and things, just like seeds are kind of in die pause until you put them in soil or water. Mm. That means uh, they're taking a rest. Taking a rest, waiting on the right conditions to come up. Yeah. Um, but I got a bunch planted, a beet, bunch more to harvest, and I think I'm gonna do one more round. And we got these ones called kestrel. They're supposed to be really disease resistant. A lot of the big market farmers grow those. And we got a special buy on those. We do, we do. We got some uh, more than a seed packet. We got some uh, bigger quantities on those. Yep. And then we got that solo variety, which is a mono germ too. Um, so lots of beets coming along. They start growing real fast right now. English peas is blooming in my garden. I got tiger collars growing like crazy. I mean, the last two weeks they have grown. I got kohlrabi planted just kicking off. My onions are good, looking good. My shallots are looking good, coming along. My beets are, are growing. I got everything looking pretty good. Now we've had a little rain the last couple of days. I suspect old Greg's will get him some taters planted this week. Yeah, Trav is too. I got some onions that's almost big rounds a quarter. Yep. So we got our, over the weekend, I went back there with my old dog and I cut up these taters. And they done superized. Well, healed over. Yeah. Healed over pretty good. So they're ready to be put in the dirt. Their the eyes is poking out there. So if you live in zone A, eight or nine, you need to have them in the dirt pretty quick. If you live zone seven or six, you need to be thinking about getting some tater dirt ready and get prepared. Mm -hmm. We oh. still got a few potatoes left that we can send out. We don't have a lot, but we got just a few. Yeah, so get your seed taters if you need them. I, I was gonna plant mine this morning, something come up, but this afternoon, um, I, I'm gonna get them planted. Sounds good to me. So get your seed taters if you need them. Um, Trying to think what else we got going. Oh, you said your shallots was doing shallots good. Shallots is coming up. I'm I'm interested in see how that's gonna play off. If we got enough time. If we got enough time. Yeah, that is gonna be interesting to see. All right, so let's move this out of the way. You can keep snacking on that if you want to. Mm -hmm. Um, so this week we're gonna be talking about corn. 
Um, got lots of different varieties of corn, sweet corn, field corn. We're going to talk a little bit about each. Um, what's the differences between the different varieties and try to help you figure out which one you might want to grow this year. And a lot of people have excuse me, varieties that they've been growing forever. They grow the same variety every year, but it's always, we encourage you to branch out and um, try something different, try a new variety. Uh, you might find something you like better. And if we're not, the one that you like to grow is not covered here today, put it in our comment section. If you've got a variety that you've liked to plant and it is your all time favorite and you'll stand by. We'll get it. Yeah, put it in our comment section there and let us take a look at it. We're interested in to see what success other people have had growing different types of corn. So yeah, so tell us uh, what varieties you like in addition to the ones that we're gonna talk about today. So let's start off talking about sweet corn. And there's uh, there's probably over a hundred varieties of sweet Lots corn of out there. Um, and let's talk about how they're broken down into different categories and kind of explain the pluses and minuses of each. So with your sweet corn, you've got three. Mm -hmm. we got we got homework again, don't we? You got three genes in your sweet corn. Okay, you got the SU gene, which is a standard gene. You got the SE, which is the sugary extender. Sometimes I say sugary enhanced. And then the SH2, which is your super sweet. So your SU, these are your old varieties, like your Silver Queen or Silver King that we don't carry. Now, I, I'm on, and I know somebody out there may disagree with me, and that's fine. But I have grown the Silver King and the Silver Queen, and I prefer the Silver Queen just a hair bit more than I do the Silver King. Okay. So, and, and the, you also your Stoll's Evergreen, which is one of the oldest varieties out there. This variety has been around over 180 years. I mean, if there's ever been an heirloom sweet corn, this is it. And now this is probably the most drought resistant variety they are out there, drought tolerant. Let me yeah. say, drought tolerant variety they are out there. So if you're in a position where you may not be able to irrigate like you think you should or may have to, this would be a good variety to plant here because it's going to make if you don't get a lot of rain yeah. and you're not in a situation where you can irrigate. So if you if can't you, put it on drip tape, then uh, that might be a good one. Oh, now, Danny and Wanda at Deep South Homestead grow a lot of that. What I found about these older varieties is they are, these old OP varieties are a lot more drought tolerant than these sugary enhanced ones. Did I say enhanced or sugary extended ones? I see. These newer varieties are not as drought tolerant as, as these older varieties are. Right. Thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, thank you for that You're little welcome. tidbit there. Um, so we got our standard, those you kind of old school varieties. Um, and then we go to the sugary extender varieties. And we've got several of those, um, actually three of them here. And within each of these categories, you can have yellow, white, or bicolor varieties for each of these um, gene types here. So we've got the Incredible, which is your yellow SE, mm -hmm. and we've got the Peaches and Cream, and the Ambrosia, both of which are bicolor um, SE. Now I'm going to tell you, the marketing guy to come up with the name for this Peaches and Cream yeah, smart fella. He hit it. That's got to be good. Pizza or ambrosia. That's, ambrosia. that's the food of the, the gods. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, then we got the SE there. And then the last one, which we don't have a specific SH2, but I'll get into the one we have that's a, that has some SH2 genes in it in just a minute. First, mm -hmm. let's talk. So let's talk about what these mean and, and what kind of the scale means here. Okay, so these up here are gonna have more starch, less sugar. As you move down this scale, you get more sugar, less starch. What that means is these are gonna store better than these, okay? Because they have more sugar, less starch. So these right here, you, you harvest these, you need to do something with them pretty quick. Your silver queen, stuff like that. These guys are holding the fridge probably a week. They say these are holding the fridge 10 days or so. So, And one of the reasons they, they've they been a lot of work done on breeding corn the last few years is because the shelf life at the supermarket. And the farmers like to grow these super sweets for the uh, supermarkets and chain stores because they have such a long shelf life. And you got a little lot harvest, better harvest window there. Right. Other things to consider, so, so that makes, oh, this is, 
this is really good because it's so sweet but there are some some uh advantages of these varieties as well if you've been gardening for a long time or been growing your own corn then you kind of a lot of these stand varieties like the silver queen and stoles evergreen you, you acquire a taste for that particular variety and I know I have. I, I particularly like some of these standards, the flavor that they have, and we put them up and we, we cream them off, put them in there, and we prefer that flavor over we do on some of the super sweets. It's just a matter of opinion. Right. These down here, as we go down this scale, these are less, what we call less hardy. So the kernels are a little more tender. You gotta be a little more careful with them when you're harvesting them and processing them. Another thing about these sweeter ones is that they're a little trickier to grow. The time you plant and the germination, the planting depth is a little more finicky with these guys than it is these. Is this silver? And queen? the water, the irrigation. Right. So the silver queen, you can get it up, you know, just about any conditions. These guys are going to be more particular to planting depth and germination is going to be a little more trickier. Um, and then these would fall somewhere in the middle there. Yep. So something to consider. And if you want to go with the real sweet ones, you're just going to have to give them a little more effort. I'd probably recommend always putting any of these two on drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you're a beginner gardener, I would definitely go with the standard varieties. Yeah. Okay. So that gives you an idea of those genes. Now, the one we've got, I said we don't have a super sweet variety, but we do have this variety called Honey Select. And Honey Slick is a combination of these two here. So it has 75% SE genes mm -hmm. and 25% SH2 genes. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of the two. And it actually won the All-American Selection Award. Honey Slick. In uh, 2001. Great name here. Good, good. Yep. good now variety. keep in mind, just for y'all that don't know, none of these varieties we carry here are GMO. That's They're right. Non-GMO corn. And you're growing that one this spring. You're going to yes, try that honey select out. And supposedly with that one, because it does have a combination of these two genes, that you don't have to isolate it from other sweet corn varieties. So you don't much. have to worry about cross-pollination? Not as much. Uh, they said for maximum sweetness, you would want to isolate it, but it's not something that you worry about as much as with these other varieties. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to pick which sweet corn you want to grow. Um, and we've got some great selections there, so go check those out. We've got them in uh, the packets, and we've also got them in one pound for those of you who like to grow a heap of corn. And if you need more than that, give us a call. We can fix you up. Yeah, well, you, whatever, however much you need, we can fix you up. If you need five pounds, ten pounds, 10 pounds we can make that pound, happen. We could send out a bag of 50 pounds this morning. We did. We sure did. So that, that covers the sweet corn, and it will won't be long for we'll be planting sweet corn around here. Now we want to talk about kind of one of your um, fetishes, which is this field corn. Yep. So, what are we starting off with? We're going to start off with blue hoppy. Okay. Now this is a blue corn that is grown out in New Mexico, and it was originated by the, some of the tribal Indians out that way. They're in this Native the Americans. Name. Well, yeah, Native Americans. Hint the name Blue Hoppy there. They use this for a lot of the uh, blue tortillas that you buy. Yeah, this blue is, tortillas. This is, a, this is a field corn and they use it for to grind up and to make blue flour. Mm -hmm. Now this particular corn here, some people confuse it and it can be considered a novelty corn, but it is a, it's used mainly for an eating corn. And this absolutely, absolutely has absolutely. the highest protein of any field corn. Uh, it's not near as productive as some of the other corns, and it's an old variety, so you got to kind of give a little bit there. You're not going you're not going to make as much as you would on some of these other varieties, but you're going to have the highest protein with this corn yard, any of them, and the wildlife absolutely love it. They'll walk around other corn to eat this one right here. You talk about pretty. That on the ear is just yep. kind of a royal deep blue, blue color. Blue hoppy. Good stuff there. Okay. What we got next? Oh, if I can get down here. The next one we got is a variety I've grown for a long time. Oh, it's got some big old kernels. Hickory King. Now, Hickory King is an old variety here, and it makes a big old kernel, if you can see in there. And this particular one, if you're a fan of eating what we call roasting ears or 
field corn, when it starts to get to the milking stage, we take it and we put it on the grill and roast it. Roasting ears. That's called roasting ears. Now, not sweet corn. You don't do that way. Just field corn. Right. This is the variety right here. This is my favorite variety for eating roasting ear corn. It makes some cobs. Big old cobs, about a foot long. Those plants that get about... Up to 15 foot tall, yeah, I say. Huge. So you make, you got to make sure you throw some dirt to them yep. um, because you don't want the hurricanes coming through here and getting them. But uh, that's a great, great variety. Now, I find this variety to be fairly drought tolerant. Mm -hmm. So if you can't get the water to it, it'll still make. And this is Hickory King. And if you ain't tried it, you got to try it. I'm going to grow me some of this this year. Last time I grew that right there, if you want something... Maybe you don't like to be bothered, but if you want to be the talk of the town and have the tallest corn around, yeah, you can don't tell it. nobody, but plant you some of that Hickory King there, and you'll have old timers stopping by wondering how you got that corn so tall. Trucker's favorite. This is old standby that's been grown a lot over the years. You grew this a couple of years ago. I did, I did. That's a good, easy variety to grow, and it makes good. You get a... I, consistently two ears per stalk nice good size on it's them. a good bit smaller kernel than what the hickory king is yeah the trucker's favorite that's an old standby great grinding corn mm -hmm. uh easy to grow easy to plant well now this is something here that i got introduced to a couple years ago and this is jimmy red corn and i got a little hey can you hold that sure I got a little bit in the bag here. I was going to try to show you what it looks like. This is a red corn, and we think it's a strain of Bloody Butcher, but it is a little bit different there, if you can see there. And this is a red corn, and this is, boy, this is some good grinding corn. Now, I've not tried to eat it as roasting meal. I have grown it for a couple years, and... Uh, Grits, fine grits, grits. Grits. I grind it with my mock meal. Mm -hmm. I grind this we'll thing up, and I make uh, grits and cornbread out of it, cornmeal. Now, I'm going to tell you, the first time I made some grits out of this, I looked at the wife. I said, we're going to be millionaires. I said, we got something right here. It, boy, it is delicious. So if you're interested in growing some young corn to grind, you got to grow you some Jimmy Red. Now, Jimmy Red seeds kind of hard to come by. But we got a good supply right now. I don't know how long it's going to last, but we got a good supply now. If you're yeah. interested in growing Jimmy Red, go ahead and get your seed bought up because it's going to go quick. Ain't just every seed catalog company out there got Jimmy Red. That's corn. right. And we want the only ones that got it. And that's some good, good stuff. Now, I'm feeling a little bit generous tonight. Generous? So what I got here is a 10-pound bag of South American popcorn. If you are interested, ready to be pop, ready to be pop. Yeah. But now, if you want to grow you some popcorn, and I'm gonna tell you, it's been a few years since I grew. You was about one year old last time I grew. So popcorn. this is seed popcorn. This is seed pop. Okay, okay. And this is non-GMO, as all of ours are. But I grew popcorn about thirty something years ago, and I hadn't grown none since. So it's, it's starting to throw a little uh, craving on craving on me again. But what I'm gonna do, if you want some good popcorn seed. We got 10 pound here. The first 10 people that send us an email and put popcorn and put your address in there, you're going to get a free one pound bag sent to you. So send us an email to cussserve.com, put the word popcorn in the title of the email, and the first 10, we can tell by the date uh, or the time, time stamp. When come in. So the first 10 that we get is going to get a free bag of this. So get the computer real quick. Get it out. Get it out, and we'll get that to you real quick, like, and you can try out that popcorn there. Um, so if you've never grown field corn, definitely want to give that a try. You can stagger that in with your sweet corn plant in a little bit. You can plant your sweet corn first, wait a few weeks, plant your field yep. corn. Because your field corn, you're going to let dry on them stalks and harvest it. But man, as far as grinding goes, making you some grits and cornbread, hard to beat. You want to show them uh, how we grind it up there? Yeah, let me get well, over here and get it. So this is something that we uh, we started carrying a couple years ago. A guy from Germany invented this thing right here, and you put your corn up here. And right. now this is this is a stone mill, so it's got actual stones in there. 
to grind the corn up. You got your hopper. Got your hopper. You put your corn in here and you got an adjustment here on the side. You can adjust to grind your corn whether you want flour, corn flour, mm -hmm. or whether you want corn meal or grits. corn grits. You can also grind up wheat for this to make regular flour. Spices. Spices. A lot of different stuff. Anything that ain't wet. You can't right. do nuts. But oil. You, you can't do anything that's really oily. Right. These things are designed in Germany, and they have really some great craftsmanship to it. Uh, Paul, the guy that's the general manager, come over and spent the day with us, and and we did some testing with it, and we we're really impressed with these babies right here. They got a great warranty on them. Now this is the 200. We sell the 200 and the 100. The 100 is exactly like this, but it has half the size motor, so the capacity on grinding is half of what the 200. The speed, yeah, speed. So the if you. This is a tabletop, by the way. Yeah, and the, the main difference in this one and some of the other ones you see out there, you can run this one in the house and it don't drive you crazy. You, some of them old ones out there, your old lady probably tell you, get out the yard if you're going to be doing all that. But this one is pretty quiet. It won't rattle the counter. Um, and it it's really you know, meant to be used inside. Yeah, and the way it was designed was you keep your corn in the refrigerator or the freezer and you take that and you grind what you need at that particular time and it keeps, you, keeps it fresh. And it's fast. And it's fast. We, so the, one of the reasons we got into this, we did a video several years ago we were showing grinding and we borrowed one uh, from Randy, I think. Yeah. And uh, it, it was kind of antique and it was kind of slow and people were asking where we got it from and all this stuff and uh we decided we need to start carrying one so we did a lot of research and uh this was the best one we found out there um for in indoor use and uh grinding up the field corn yep so check out there's some videos out there on the mock mill check it out if you have any questions you can call us i'll be glad to talk mock if, you, mill if with you. you got a woman in your life and want to really really make her happy for a birthday or anniversary Ooh. that that mock mill is yeah uh, she'd like that Perfect, perfect little gift. And it work, and it work well in your conjunction with your gardening because you can produce the corn and let her grind it. That's right, that's right. And let her make you some grits. Mm -hmm. All right. So good corn talk there. We didn't get into much of growing strategies on corn because we, we'll save that for another show. But uh, yep. as far as the varieties and what to look for, I hope that was enjoyable for you. Now we're going to get into our questions this week. And our first question before we get into the questions. If we do answer your question on the show, send us an email to custserve.com. We'll send you a nice little prize. Uh, put you all your questions in the comments and you might be a lucky question answered person Recipient. on the show. That's right. So the first one comes from Polecat5150 and uh, he wants to know about, can we share a good okra pickling recipe on the show. Uh, he said he always has so much okra and he don't know what to do with it all. Well, Polecat, I am feeling generous again tonight. Look at what I'm gonna send you. Send me your address and I'm gonna send you this great book right here. And we also have this book for sale, but now I keep this book down at the house and it's got two okra pickling recipes in it that I've used. One of them's a sweet and one of them's a spicy and we do both of them. But this thing here is a great book, and I'm going to send it to old Polecat free so he can have him some recipes. If he'll send us our address. He's got to have his address. Yep. Uh, we'll get him that book. He can learn how to pick it. Yep. How about old Andrew? What's Andrew's last name? I'm, I'm guessing Mashad. Andrew Mashad says, hey, guys, great video as always. I looked through your older videos and didn't see any info on asparagus or strawberries. Have you fooled with them much? If so, any tips? Well, we did do a, we do got a couple old videos on asparagus. If you go to our YouTube channel and type asparagus, you'll find them. Or the ones behind this shop here, we uh, planted those long, long time ago, probably five years ago. Five yeah, or six. and they're still growing good. In fact, I just mulched them over the weekend. Uh, we are big believers in growing asparagus, and we got a couple, I believe we got two good videos out there on asparagus. Where's that place we get, get the crowns from? Norse? Norse. N-O-U-R-S-E, if I'm yep. not mistaken. Uh, got good asparagus crowns. And get those in. As far as strawberries, we've been talking about strawberries, but we, we haven't pulled the trigger. Yeah, we, we're probably going to do something this next year on strawberries. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about strawberries. I've been strawberries. doing some research. You be, you're going to be prepared. Yep. All right. And then our last question here comes from Randy Weeks, and uh, he wants to know, 
how can he get his wife to plant taters if he ain't got the dirt ready? Well, now Randy calls me a lot, and I don't mind talking to folks on the phone and talks about what he's going to do and what ain't. Now, Randy, you've got to get off that couch and quit watching the Hallmark Channel and Gunsmoke and get out there and get something done. It's just simple as that. Now, I know it's easy to sit in there on the couch and get your back and air conditioning and air conditioning, but you got to get off that couch and get out there and do something. This kind of stuff needs to be done in preparation of what you're going to do. Now, you know it's going to be tater planting time, and you know you got to get that dirt ready. So you got to get out there a couple of three weeks ahead of time to get started and get it done. You can't wait to the last minute to get out there. And I know Andy, I love Andy Griffin as much as the next fellow does, but there comes a point in time when you got to get off the couch. Yeah, yeah. You can put it on. Well, the TVs nowadays, you can pause it. Yeah. Record it, pause right. it, record it. If there's a daylight of burning and it's pretty, you need to be outside of working. And you That's can right. watch your Andy Griffin and your Gunsmoke and your Hallmark Channel in the bed it's night. dark. That's right. So there you go, Randy. Hope that helps. All right. So uh, good questions this week. Oh, we had a lot of questions last week. I hope we, could, maybe we can answer some more of them on next week's show and do a few more questions. Um, folks, I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Don't keep us a secret. If you really like our show and watch it from week to week, hit that like button, hit that share button, yep. leave us a comment, tell everybody about it. That way we can spread the word and uh, we can have a bigger crowd join us every Thursday night. We'll see you guys next Take week. Take care.